Every year, ESO has an in-game anniversary celebration event, also known as the Jubilee. And it's an event that is well-loved by the community because of how easy it is to get some pretty baller rewards. After reading the PTS patch notes for the next update, and checking out the 2024 Jubilee event on the public test server over the past few days, I can say with confidence that this just might be the best one yet. And that comes as no surprise when you take into account the fact that the Elder Scrolls Online is celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. There's a lot to cover, so let's get right into it. There have been some slight changes made to the annual quest that rewards you with the anniversary cake memento this year. This year's cake is said to be made from 100% pure black marsh chocolates with bright blue toxic marsh slug dye, and I've heard from a few sources that eating this will cause instant death to non-Argonians, so consume it at your own risk. The devs have made it so that interacting with these little event mementos is no longer necessary to obtain the special event experience gain bonuses that they provide. The Jubilee is no exception, as you'll no longer need to eat your Jubilee cake every couple of hours and give your character sudden onset diabetes just to maintain their experience boost. Diabetes. Instead, this bonus is passive. You will still have to eat the cake once each day to obtain your three daily allotted event tickets though. The way that the Jubilee event has been structured has varied over the years. This year, if you complete any daily quest in Tamriel, you'll receive an anniversary Jubilee gift box. A daily quest giver can be easily recognized by the iconic, glowing light blue quest marker that floats above their heads. The most common daily quests that come to mind for a lot of players are the DLC World Boss, World Event, and Delve dailies that you can get from ESO's DLC zones, as these dailies are already well known because of their decent gold farming potential. Of course, some other popular dailies include crafting dailies, also known as RITs, which you can obtain from RIP boards in major cities, PvP dailies like the Battlegrounds Daily or the Cyrodiil Town Quests or Conquests, or everyone's favorite, Pledges! Let's fucking go! <laughs> Not only will you obtain event reward boxes from completing any daily quest, but you'll also be able to get Jubilee boxes from the following activities. Killing and looting any final dungeon boss, trial boss, or world boss, completing any incursion event, also known as a world event, such as dolmens, geysers, dragons, etc., opening up a Tales of Tribute reward bag, and claiming your rewards for the worthy mails. This is pretty neat, since you won't necessarily have to go out of your way to earn Jubilee boxes the way you often have to go out of your way to earn other event reward boxes. You can log in and do whatever you normally do, whether that's carrying your entire raid team with your roleplay build, griefing your opponent in Tales of Tribute for two hours, or having your hairline removed by some Nightblade shiver. These activities will all yield reward boxes. The Anniversary Jubilee gift boxes can drop a variety of rewards, such as crafting materials, recipes, transmute crystals, motifs, and style pages for the new Earthbone Aeliad armor style. Drip check! What do you think about this style? The first reward box that you receive every day will be a glorious version of it, distinguishable by its golden text in your inventory, and it has a significantly higher chance of dropping valuable things, namely the new style page, than the other purple versions of this event box that you'll receive after completing subsequent dailies. I was wondering if we'd get some extra special goodies during this year's Jubilee event, seeing as it is the 10th anniversary and all, and fortunately, my suspicions were spot on. Let's take a look at some of the unique goodies that we can get from this event that we've never been able to earn before. The daily glorious boxes are guaranteed to reward you with a bound, untradeable fragment for the brand new Jubilee steed that's unique to this event. That's right fellas, we can earn a mount from participating in this event. Thank you ZeniMax Online Studios, very based. As I mentioned already on Elongated Muskrat's Hell site, <coughs> follow me there <coughs> if you want. <laughs> this event unique mount can be earned by consuming 25 Jubilee Confetti Pack fragments. Now you can earn these from your glorious boxes, but you can also spend your event tickets to purchase them. They can be bought from the Impresario for three event tickets each. So, in the patch notes, the developer stated, quote unquote, this event will run for an extended period this year, and you'll need to expend some event tickets on fragments in order to acquire it, if such is your fancy, of course. What I gathered from this sentiment is that we will have to spend some of our event tickets on these Jubilee confetti pack fragments in order to have enough of them, 25 in this case, to create our mount. 
The wording of this gave me the impression that obtaining your guaranteed fragment every day from your glorious jubilee box for the duration of the event will likely not be enough to purchase the mount by the end of the event. And you won't be able to purchase these from other players since they are bind on pickup items. So keep this in mind if you plan to get this steed for yourself. It's looking like you'll need to sacrifice some tickets to do so. It's also not explicitly mentioned anywhere how long this event will last. A handful of activities also have a chance to drop unique, never-before-sourced cosmetic rewards, so you won't want to miss out on the opportunity to earn these. There is an extremely small chance to obtain a style page for the True Flame Sword replica if you fish from any fishing node during the Jubilee event. There's also a chance for any Dolmen reward chest to contain a style page for Manamarco's staff. No, that was not a euphemism. The staff of worms, people. Man, get your heads out of the gutter. I cannot believe my community is like this. What could possibly have made them this way? Any world boss in Vardenfell has a chance to drop a style page for either the Sooner Raw replica or the Barbus Wolf helmet replica, as these are seen in the Vardenfell chapter story. Any geyser in Somerset has a chance to drop a style page for the Ulvor staff, as this staff is also prevalent in the Somerset chapter story. It's important to note that these rare style pages were bind on pickup items on the public test server, and they were not available for purchase from the impresario. If this remains the case, when the event is available on the live server, that means that players will not be able to purchase these style pages with gold or event tickets. This notion has, unsurprisingly, been the source of a fair amount of discussion and criticism. On one hand, some players enjoy that they'll have to do a bit of grinding for their fancy, unique rewards. On the other hand, some players are worried that they won't be able to get a desired style page to drop, and thus lose out on the opportunity to earn one of these event goodies, especially since the option of purchasing one with gold or event tickets is not available. The fact that these items are bound also begs the question, are these drops curated? If you get the Barbus Wolf helmet to drop and you keep farming Vardenfell world bosses, is there a chance that you can get another bound and likewise useless style page for the wolf helmet instead of the Sooner Raw replica style page? If you feel strongly about this predicament, I encourage you to share your feedback with the developers on the forums. I've been saying this for a while now, but I've found it interesting that we are seeing an increasing amount of bound rewards that we can receive from participating in content these days instead of tradable ones. Being the gold-obsessed fiend that I am, I of course would much prefer it if I had the option to sell the rewards that I get from participating in content to other players for gold, but this may no longer be in line with the developer's vision for the game or its reward system. After all, you can argue that by making items bound, players will be more encouraged to actually participate in the content instead of just buying whatever they want with gold. The Impresario is an event merchant that is located in all the major cities across Tamriel. You can find them anytime an event is active by checking out your map and looking for their event icon. During the Jubilee events, the Impresario will offer the following. A bag of Jubilee yesteryear that offers event goodies from previous year's Jubilee festival events that you don't already own. It won't reward you with a style page or motif that you've already collected. This grab bag can drop items from the Bone Mold, Saber Keel, Worm Cult, Jeffrey Paladin, Imperial Champion, Prophet, Laris Titanborn, Sai Sahan, and Abner Tharn styles or motifs. It also has a chance to give you an additional Worm Cult motif. If you still purchase a grab bag after owning absolutely every everything, it will reward you with a group repair kit. Bound cake furnishings for all the Jubilee cakes over the years will be available for purchase, and you'll also be able to purchase these new little individual cake slice furnishings that represent all the major cake visual styles that you'll be able to place in your homes. I think that these are especially cute, and they fortunately only cost one event ticket each. You'll be able to purchase bound style pages for the Earthbone Alien Armor style, as well as all three fragments for the Molag Ball Illusion Imp Pet. Lastly, the Impresario will also have the first and second of three total fragments that are needed to create the next event morph, the Master of Schemes personality. The third fragment will be available in later events. I like that we're going to be able to obtain yet another personality through the event ticket system, and this one's looking to be quite an edgelord one, and yet it also reminds me of the Virgin Walk meme. <laughs>
To conclude this video, I want to just quickly go over a few quick gold farming tips. This event is well known among veteran traders for being one that significantly affects the market, as well as one that also provides a lot of great investment opportunities for players who plan to stick around for a while. We can expect that a lot of players will be logging in to participate in this event, and that a lot of these players will be farming event boxes. But even the players that log in to play the way they normally do and are not going to go out of their way to farm event boxes are still going to be earning a lot of them because of how readily they'll be dropping this year. In fact, I encourage you all to farm boxes if you can. I know that doing crafting writs on all your characters is a go-to jubilee box farming strat. Just be sure not to burn yourself out, especially since there are so many other ways to earn boxes this year. So of course, I can tell you all the obvious and say, farm as many boxes as you can to earn valuable items that you can then sell for gold. Wow, really revolutionary concept, Artea. But I'd also like to take a moment to suggest another more long-term strategy, investing in items during the event to sell at a later time. Because the Jubilee event always floods the motif and crafting material markets thanks to the sheer amount of event boxes that are being earned, the average values for these kinds of items tend to experience a drop during this event. Supply and demand, baby! Consider buying up items that you believe will be worth significantly more if you were to sell them later in the year. Items whose prices you think will recover within a reasonable time frame because of how sought after they are or how tricky they are to get. Items such as fancy chest or leg motifs that are sourced from trickier endeavors like unpopular DLC dailies or tricky DLC dungeons fit this description. Crafting materials that are difficult to obtain but fairly valuable because of their prevalence in crafting, like dragon materials or perfect row or powdered mother of pearl, could also be decent investments. If the devs have a change of heart and those super rare drops that I mentioned earlier like Manamarco's Ding Dong, I mean a staff, end up being tradable style pages, then those will absolutely be worth a fortune, especially as time passes. Investments aside, newer ESO players will be made aware of all the different kinds of old event style pages that they've never had a chance to collect thanks to the bag of Jubilee yesteryear that's found in the Impresario's inventory. Upon being made aware of these style pages, some of these players may look to complete their style page sets with gold by buying up style pages on the market instead of spending their precious event tickets on these goodie bags. If you have any old Jubilee style pages, especially the really old Companions style pages, I found that selling these during the Jubilee event has been a very financially rewarding endeavor. Last year on PCNA, I was able to sell these old companion style pages that I had saved up from many years ago for 200k each, with the nicer looking styles like the Saisahan chest style selling for significantly more. You can prepare for this event by checking to see if you have any spare Jubilee style pages or even buying up some fairly cheaply priced ones to resell during the event for more. What do you think about this upcoming event? It was available for testing on the PTS, which means that we can expect it in the next quarter of content. Historically, the Jubilee takes place around the first week of April. Alright, that'll do it for this video. Thank you all for sticking around, and hopefully it was of some use to you. Shout out to my YouTube members for their additional support, and I'll see you gamers in the next video. Cheers.